Well, it's still pretty muddy, but at least it's not a swamp. So, we can start working on going back together again. The way I'm thinking I'm going to do this is I'm not going to bother running this correctly. I'm going to just get this put back together here, run a little stub of hard line, and then I'm going to run a nylon fuel line from here all the way down to the fuel pump um, and not bother making a new hard line at this point in time. There's no point in wasting that energy. We're just going to run a nylon line down to it, and then I'm going to run it directly out of this fuel can instead of out of the tank um, just to be able to make sure that I've got clean fuel and see if I can get this thing to fire up <clears throat> before I try to do anything as far as pulling fuel out of the tank. And realistically speaking, I could just put this fuel tank uh, somewhere safe and be able to drive this thing in on just the fuel that's in that bottle. So I think that's the plan. Um, I'm gonna let this dry off for a little bit longer because it's still pretty squishy, uh, but it is a nice 65 degree day here. so. I'm gonna let it dry off for a couple more hours um, and then we'll roll up underneath this thing and put a fuel pump on there and hope it just goes in on one first shot and I don't have to jump back up and roll the car over uh, consequently also we did avoid any of the uh, the tornado stuff didn't hit us here so that's good uh, no damage anything here it was just uh, rather scary anyway uh, let's let this thing dry off for a little bit longer and we'll get back out here and get to work Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. Yes! Yes, 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 yes. All right. Let's get this line transferred over to the other pump. And get this thing installed. Man, that's a big thing. That's a big thing. Cardboard's dried out. Ground is more or less dried. So let's go ahead and crawl underneath this thing. And I do need to make sure I remove the gasket because there will be one of these guys that's on there. This guy sits here. Now this is typically you're gonna wanna put some kind of a sticky component on here because this is definitely annoying when you're trying to run those bolts through here and get this thing done. Um, otherwise, you're gonna end up with the gasket slightly off and it's gonna make it a pain in the neck to run the bolts in there. I'm gonna try it without it, because I'm a fool and see whether or not I can get lucky. Uh, probably not, but I'm, I'm willing to give it a try. But I need to get the gasket material off the, off the block that's already there and I have my handy dandy gasket removal tool here. So lay up underneath this thing, start cutting off some gasket, and let's get this thing mounted. Or at least give it our first try. Got our bolts here as well. And let's clean those off a little bit real quick. Definitely just laid down in the mud. Ah, <laughs> uh, well, well, you're already dirty now. All right, let's look what we're going. All right. So you can see there where our fuel pump goes right there. You can see she's quite a bit sludgy. So we need to clean all that up and then see if we can get these bolts and this pump on there. And we're going to hope and pray that it's in the right orientation to be able to get this thing to just slide right in there. Otherwise, we got to bump it over and try again and try again and try again. All right, we are reasonably cleaned off. It's not perfect, but uh this is literally just to be able to get this thing powered up and in the shop and then i gotta pull the fuel pump back off anyway so it may leak a tiny little bit uh ideally you want to make sure that's all clean completely before you put your new gasket service down but in our case i'm gonna call it good enough good enough for government work so let's get this pump on here and hopefully she seats <sighs> Still not working. Keep rolling the cam over. Oh, this, is, this is the fun part about this.
Nope. Keep rolling it. That'll do right there, buddy. Fourth time's the charm. All right, now we just gotta get our bolts in. Whew. Which is easier said than done. I'm sure somebody's gonna make a comment about an easier way to do this. You would think, after having done this multiple times on my back in uncomfortable positions, I would have learned a way. But alas. <laughs> right, come on, get in there. Don't lose the bolt. the bolt again and I lost the other bolt all right so you get the idea here right no need to make you guys suffer with me for the next hour while I try to get these two bolts in here I'll be back with you in a little bit all right got the first bolt in there in the front the tricky part is the blind bolt in the back and you can see here how that gasket is sits in between unfortunately if that gasket shifts a little bit and the bolt pops off you can't get back through there unless you get the gasket completely lined back up and that is generally speaking the only thing that's holding me up is that gasket and that bolt on the other side of this just trying to get them lined up and this is just a literally a do it by feeling kind of thing because you can't see anything so I just keep rubbing around the hole until it slides in as it were I went this is just annoying. It's not hard. It's realistically an easy job. It's just annoying. Tighten it, nope. Loosen it, nope. It'll go in. Patience. Patience. Yeah. Got it, 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 got it. All right. All right. Whew. <sighs> oh. Get cramps in all kinds of places. All right, cinch this thing down. Uh. 
We're having fun, right? Yeah, buddy. Hey, at least it's an awesome day outside. Absolutely gorgeous. Like 70 degrees. Perfect. I love it. Good enough. All right. Fuel pump officially installed. All right, so fuel pump is installed. Now the question is going to be, how do we want to feed this thing? Uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and reuse the inline filter, even though I don't really want to, but I'm going to go ahead and reuse this. That way I can see whether or not it's spinning fuel up. I'm going to pull directly out of the tank. Um, so... I'm just going to worm clamp a 3 8 inch hose onto the feed line. Need to work out another, put a new, <laughs> put a new line on that. So we'll pull this off, put a new line, flare a new line, put a new line in here, and just give it a little stub here just to be able to pull fuel into the carb. So let's get this thing apart and get a new line made for that. work you turned didn't you didn't you didn't you yes you did yes you did life is going well for me today life is going well for me today and I just got to get this little bit of line out of here and make a new bit with a flare here we go there we go new bit with a flare punch that out of here all right Punch. Whack that with a hammer. Yeah, that'll work. Yahtzee! Okay. New piece. Flared. Flared. So it seals nicely. I am going to hit this with a brush real quick. Wire wheel, get her all pretty. I'm gonna go ahead and throw that on the ground. Get this thing a little prettier, just cause I can. And then we'll get this thing back together. Good enough. Alrighty, I did put my filter back in there. This is a big honker. This is a one inch. And you don't need to tighten this down to like god awful torque here. Otherwise you can split the actual carburetor, which would be bad in curry. All right, that's good enough. And if it leaks, we can give it a little extra ooga dooga. Again, don't care that this isn't perfect. This is a temporary solution for right now, just to get this thing running. All right, that is tight enough. So we're just gonna run a three inch hose from here down to there. Worm clamp, worm clamp, that feeds the carburetor. Uh, and then I'm gonna do a three inch hose from the feed line to my jug of fuel and then she should fire up that's it that's all there's to it and i've got this nylon fuel pressure or fuel line from here down yonder which should give me the ability to go into this guy here which we went ahead and chopped that off and flared that so we can run that nylon line onto here run that into the carb out of the fuel pump and then all we got to do is connect up uh, <laughs> a really long hose from the feed line into my fuel tank we're almost there
Come on, it's right in there, baby. That should be good and tight. That's a unit of measurement in case anybody's curious on German cars. Good and tight. Fuel line to tank. We're going to cap off the return line. Uh, and then, yeah, that's, uh, that's it, man. That's it, man. I need one more worm clamp to get that hose attached to the feed line. Made a new version of the same idea to be able to block off the return this is not a lot of pressure that this is going to be under um, so i just ran a bolt in here cinched her down with a worm clamp shove that on the return line and that should be fine then let's get this uh this side down into the fuel pump all righty there we go feed line return line up to the carb line only thing left to do is put the other end on the fuel tank and Turn her over, see what happens. Whew. What's the over under on this working? What do you think? I think it's gonna work. It's gonna just fire right up. Although I have absolutely no idea on that carburetor. But whatever. If it if it at least pulls fuel, we can figure out the carburetor part. I tell you what, uh a lot of people are probably gonna ask, Austin, why are you doing this when you could just be doing it in the in the shop? And I'll be honest, um, a lot of it's because this is what most people do. This is the life that most people who are doing the hot rod thing, they're not in a fully furnished shop with all the lifts and tools and everything they could possibly need. They're in their driveway, their yard, their wherever, their garage if they're lucky, a lean-to, you know, working on their hot rod, building it on a budget, um, doing what they can, where they can, when they can. Um, so, you know, I, <laughs> it's not that I can't do it. It's just that I feel like this is probably a little bit more legitimate uh and something a lot of youtubers lose uh sight of once they get to a, a certain level of success or they happen to have a, a business behind them anyway yeah that's why i'm doing this let's fire this sucker up shall we okay let's make sure now none of our pulleys are going to turn because everything is disconnected um so i'm not worried about that that line down there is not exactly in the greatest of places if i were to have my power steering line on but it's not connected so I don't think I got to worry about anything. It's got enough juice to be able to fire this thing up. It'll run off battery for at least now uh, This is my feed line here So technically speaking all I should have to do is shove feed line down in Tank and this sucker will fire Oh man Wish me luck folks wish me luck. I hope this goes okay. It's gonna be fine. Hot! Holy cow! God! Don't leave your keys on the dash. Holy crap. Yep, those are still really hot. Still really hot. Sorry. Blooper reel there. <laughs> don't don't leave your keys sitting on the black dash. Wow, those are hot. Alright. Contact. All right, that should have pulled enough fuel forward. Let's see if there's fuel in the filter. Hey, there's fuel in the fuel filter. We're gonna get it, buddy. We're gonna get it. 
We're gonna get it. Come on, baby. talking uh now we can fix some of the carburetor issues uh i know i've got a couple of val or of uh, vacuum leaks i gotta cap off so let's fix a couple of those she's running buddy she's a runner and there's no fuel leaks i'm not about to light myself on fire no so far so far I'm thinking maybe I should plug off these enormous vacuum leaks in the back, though. Yeah, probably. And I still have no idea where this quadrature came from. No idea. Because my green car didn't come with a Q-Jet on it. It came with a two-barrel. Oh, maybe this is the original one that came off my 70. That's what it was, because I did get a new you 455 got, you one. Got, you got a, one, got a different one for your 455. Yeah. <sighs> All right. Got that guy capped off. That's definitely our major vacuum leak. Still got plenty of fuel. There's a screen in this thing, so I can't go all the way down, but it should be enough to at least get it fired up and running. Yeah, buddy. She's a runner. Oh, that corner windows work. Oh, buddy. Bent my fingernail back, that sucks. Okay, let's see what she's got. to uh, move the Mustang out of the way so I can get this thing in the shop because then we got to stick taking it apart. Yes, I spent all that time and energy to get this thing to drive 200 feet into the shop so I can take it apart. All right, folks. Uh, we've got our fuel system here. This car has not moved under its own power in a very long time. I've never really technically driven this car. Um, wheels are on. Ish. Yeah, probably, maybe. Hopefully. They've got air-ish. Uh, this car did, at one point in time when I had it running, uh, blow a brake line and actually run into a car which cost me like eight thousand dollars because yeah i don't want to i don't want to go into that but all i gotta do is make it 200 feet no power steering no alternator no none of that stuff so get there we'll see all right baby
car steering, that's not fun. Also not entirely sure if I have brakes. I have some brakes, not a lot of brakes. Drive in reverse very, very easily. There's neutral. This is hard to do with one hand. Whatever, good enough. Good enough, it's in. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. I can't get out of the car, but I'm in. It goes from drive to reverse really easily. You, you paid for this thing, right? I did. It's scary. I did pay for this. There we go, folks. It is in the shop. It has officially made a drive under its own power. Ta-da! My 1968 Pontiac Le Mans project. <sighs> all right, so next step, take it all apart. Uh, we did all that to get this thing inside to be able to pull the engine and transmission out of it. Uh, transmission is going to go to Dion Vickers up at Vickers Performance so he can go through it. Uh, motor is going to come apart. That'll be the next thing you see is taking this car apart and then taking the motor apart and then taking Dion the transmission and Rich pulling my roof apart back here. Don't look at it! Don't look at it! Don't look at it! Don't, don't look at it. We'll talk about it next time. Uh, yeah, so we're going to end it there. I'll call that a win. It made it in here under its own power. That was the whole plan of the whole process. Uh, yeah, I'm excited. It's not rough, or it's not great. It's, it's, it's a little rough. It's not great. But it's somewhere we can start from. We can make it a race car. We can make it great. I know it. Whew. Thanks for being here, guys. Uh, welcome to Automotive Adventures with Austin. Uh, a uh, little side project I have going on, which is basically just going to be all my projects and the crazy stuff that I get into here around the shop. And uh, this is definitely going to be on that list of crazy things I get into. So we're just getting started with this. Next up, start tearing that car apart. See you next time. Take care.